The college football playoff is officially set, and today we're letting NCAA football predict the whole thing. Will Alabama prove that they deserve the fourth spot, or will Michigan come away with their first championship in the 21st century? Washington or Texas could also win it all, and for my Florida State fans, I'm sorry, but the committee left you all out for our entertainment, and we're gonna get things started now with the one-seeded Wolverines facing off against four-seed Alabama. This one's taking place in the Rose Bowl, and I'll be rocking with these settings for every Sam. Go ahead and make your prediction in the comments on who you think's gonna win it all, and Alabama's starting out with the ball, so we'll see what Jalen Milrow can cook up on this opening drive. He's keeping the read option. And for their first play, a few yards isn't bad, but this Michigan defense is going to be hard to crack. So I'm sure they wish Jace McClellan could have picked up that third down, but they're getting it here. And Ja'Cory Brooks was questionable for this game with a shoulder injury, but he's out on the field. After losing to TCU last year, Michigan does not want to lose in the semifinals again. But so far, Alabama's having no issues running the ball on them. And that could have been a very costly turnover. Jalen Milrow just made the wrong read there, and now he's trying to escape the pocket, but he can't. So it is third and 15, where he he is going to drop back, get it out in time, but it's not going to get the first down. So the Wolverines have held Will Record to a field goal, which he's drilling down the middle. I don't know about this one, but I know that Texas Washington's going to be an offensive shootout. So I'm excited to see that semifinal matchup after this one. It looks like Blake Corm's going to get open on the halfback screen and maybe get a first down. But you could say that the refs gave Michigan a very generous spot. And on second and seven, JJ McCarthy's dropping back. He is going to get it off to his flat, but that's only going for a couple yards. Alabama has a chance to get Michigan off the field early, and they're doing another halfback screen, but they weren't ready for it. So Blake Corm has been Michigan's best wide receiver so far, but he hasn't been able to get things going on the ground and JJ McCarthy just took off. That's going to make this a third and manageable where they just tried to do another halfback screen, but Alabama was ready for it. And on this punt return, Kool-Aid McKinstry is not going anywhere. There's only a couple minutes remaining in the first quarter now where both teams have had a possession. And after getting a few on first down, they're going to go with another run, getting another couple, but they'll probably have to pass on this third down and they opted to run instead. Michigan just forced a three and out and maybe their second drive will be better than the first. They have a little bit of a speed option on this play, where J.J. McCarthy could have pitched that to Blake Corn, but he decided to keep it himself, and Cornelius Johnson couldn't hold on to the football there, but J.J. McCarthy will make up for it. So it's third and three, where they do another halfback screen. I've seen like four or five of these already. Blake Corn wants it, though, and those are the only passes they're completing for the time being, but it's working. They might as well continue to feed it to him, because he wants it more than anybody else, but with his size, it's hard for him to fight for yardage there, and they're going to pick up the third down. That's gonna take us to the end of the first quarter, and it was the first time that we had seen Donovan Edwards out there on the field. It's been a lot of running from both teams though, so I'm sure we'll see more of him in the future, but Michigan's in five wide and they're completing an actual pass. It wasn't a halfback screen, but they are stuck on a third and inches where Roman Wilson caught it, but he wasn't able to get the first down. And the Wolverines do not want to take a field goal. They're playing aggressively, but it's going to pay off for them. Right now, they have six first downs to the Crimson Tides too, and their offense is trying to assert their dominance, but they have to finish this drive off, and that was almost intercepted. I'm not sure how J.J. McCarthy missed his target so bad, but Chris Braswell should have picked it off and they would have gotten it back. Now he's taking a sack, so in the end, Michigan only got a field goal anyway. The ball's back in the hands of Jalen Milrow, and they're coming out slinging it on this first play, where Jermaine Burton held on to the football, and now they have a little bit of a jet sweep action going, but Kobe Prentice didn't get anywhere, and Jalen is gonna keep this option for the first down. This semifinal matchup's gonna be run heavy, while our next one's gonna be pass heavy, so we're gonna get to see both sides of things in the playoffs, and then the winner of each of those games is gonna meet in the championship. Jalen Milrow got another 10 here, though, so I'm guessing that Michigan's defense is getting a little tired. I'm not sure how, since we're only midway through the second quarter but they're no longer getting to the ball as quickly as they were early on. And Alabama's been trying to throw it the entire drive, but if nothing's open, Jalen Milrow will just scramble and this one's gonna get him to the 11. You have to have a quarterback spy out there on every play and this time Michigan did. So nobody's been able to reach the end zone yet. And what a boring first half of football. We should have started with the Washington-Texas matchup because I know that that's gonna be an air raid attack back and forth. But Roman Wilson just came away with a big catch to keep the chains moving for the Wolverines and look at Blake Corm go. All of a sudden, Michigan's on Alabama's side of the field and now JJ McCarthy's going deep. He has Cornelius Johnson open. Who's going to take it to the crib? And could the game be starting to open up for us? That's my hope because it makes things so much more entertaining. Jalen Milrow's still scrambling like the last drive though. And sometimes I wonder if he even makes a read back there or he just decides to run. How did Jermaine Burton come away with this ball? The defensive effort here is not going to go overlooked, but that was a very tight window. And I'm impressed that Milrow was able to hit it. Now they're going to go with the halfback screen. This is the Michigan special. It's not going to work on them. And you have to wonder if they're going to try to drain the clock if they don't pick up anything on the second and eight, but they do. Now they have a reason to hurry it up because they're trying to get a touchdown for themselves before the half. And Will Reichard's a good kicker, so they just have to get to about the 30 and he could probably hit it. But Jalen Harrell fighting to get this sack is a massive deal because now Alabama most likely won't get points on this drive unless this throw goes well, and that was wobbly. Most likely Michigan's gonna just take it to the half after their defense came up clutch. And both of these teams really wanna make the championship. So far, I don't think it could be any more even. And we've yet to see anybody turn it over, but for whoever 
whoever makes that big mistake, it's going to be a big deal. JJ McCarthy missed his target on first down, so on second down, he's hoping that he can hit it. But for the second time today, he hits the hands of an Alabama linebacker and they're not picking up the third down. So in less than 30 seconds, they have to punt it back already. And Kool Aid McKinstry had a couple blockers, but none of them held for him, so he had to fight on his own to get to the 40. Again, the stats show that these teams have been very even. So both of these colleges need somebody to step up and make the difference for their team. But nobody stood out just yet. Jalen Milrow pitched that one just in time, but Michigan was all over it, and Alabama's one for five on third down conversions, with that drop making them one for six. The Crimson Tide can hope that this punt will pin Michigan back, but it's not going to bounce how they wanted it to. And on first and 10, JJ McCarthy is going to keep it, but he is getting swarmed by the Crimson Tide. They say that defense wins championships, and right now both of them are trying to get them a spot in the championship, where Alabama could potentially force another three and out, but they're not going to. Cornelius Johnson instead comes away with his second catch of the day, and the Wildcat run did not fool Chris Braswell, who got his second tackle for loss, but Michigan just got another big pass. And J.J. McCarthy has delivered on every deep throw that he's had to make, but he's not going to get that ball off here. I've been impressed with him so far, and on this one, he's going to hit Colston Loveland down in the flat, who's going to shed one tackle, break another one, and he's fighting for even more. I feel like we've seen more effort from Michigan's offense as Blake Corm just trucked another player, and maybe they want it more than the Crimson Tide. Blake Corm's going to take this hand off to the four. So Michigan is threatening to score again, and J.J. McCarthy delivered a dot. Roman Wilson found the open space in the defense, and Alabama has to get things going offensively soon. I mean, rumor may have it that Michigan stole signs in this game to get a bit of an advantage, but we can't prove it, so Jalen Milrow just needs to suck it up and score. Those running plays are no longer working for them, and here on third and eight, Kobe Prentice just ran backwards to get that ball, and did he make it there? In real time, it didn't seem like he got far enough to move the chains, but he got it anyway, and now he's going to come away with another catch where he's going to take this one to the 22. Between him and Michigan's Cornelius Johnson, they have been the two receivers that have made the difference, and Alabama desperately needed points on this drive, so it's a good thing that they're already in field goal range, especially since Jalen Milrow had to throw that ball away, and here on third and seven, he just goes underneath the Jermaine Burton, but that's not going to be enough to get more than a field goal on this drive. After simming through back-to-back -back kick returns for touchdowns, I've decided I'm not simming those anymore, and of course now they want to boot it out of the back of the end zone for touchbacks, but at least the score is still an eight-point game, so it stinks that we didn't get to witness either one of them, but it's okay. Michigan's still going into the fourth with an eight-point lead, and to start the fourth, J.J. McCarthy is going to take this snap, throw it off of his back foot, and I don't know how Tyler Morris caught it, but it's not enough to get the first down, and you best believe I'm watching all of the punts as well. I'm not witnessing missing out on back-to-back -back returns ever again. If Alabama wants to make the championship, they need to score, and I know there's six minutes left, but I feel like if they don't do something on this drive, they're in a lot of trouble. It's third and eight now, though, and they go with the halfback screen. This one not going anywhere either, so they're probably going to punt it right back, and I could see Michigan running through as much clock as they can, because with six minutes left, they could technically get through all of it and win the game with them never seeing the ball again. We'll see what happens, but instead, they're passing on this first down to Roman Wilson. And right now, J.J. McCarthy's 17 for 21, so you want to trust him, but they should also be trying to wind down some of the clock, and he just continues to sling it, but that wasn't a catch. If you couldn't tell from that angle, Morgan didn't get a foot in, so now it's second and 10 where they return to Wildcat, and did Blake Corm just try to throw the football? I would have loved to see that, but he made the smart decision in trying to keep it instead, and this isn't going anywhere, so Alabama's getting another chance, and Kool-Aid McKinstry has a lot of space back here on this return where he's going to get to the outside and go to the 35. The Crimson Tide's offense throughout this entire game has been very disappointing, especially since they'd only have nine points if it wasn't for the kick return for a touchdown. And you have to wonder if Florida State got this fourth spot, how much worse could they have been? We'll never know, and I might do a 12-team playoff sim in the future if this video does well. So if you all want to see me sim the playoffs if there were 12 teams in it this year, let me know. And I'm just happy that this game's going to come down to the wire because I always love a close matchup and we want the playoffs to be entertaining. Alabama's been able to get down to the red zone multiple times, but they've yet to finish off one of these drives, so we'll see if they can here. Jalen Milrow really wants it, and he's got 58 rushing yards, but it seems like he's had more. I bet they're going to go back to Roy Dell Williams on second and goal, but instead he passed the ball, and he had 45 open in the flat, but he's not going to get the fullback dive, so they have to go for it on fourth and goal, where Jalen Milrow pitches it, and they get in. Now to tie it up, they need the two-point conversion as well, but they're not going to get it. It's intercepted, and Michigan just came up with a huge turnover. Alabama's playing it very aggressive, going for the onside kick as well, but they're not going to get it. So now they're going to have to use all three of their timeouts and try to stop J.J. McCarthy, but even if they hold them, there's also Blake Corm to stop, and he's going to take this outside run to the 41. This is a huge third and four where they're going to pass, and it's floated up over the air, but it's knocked down. So Alabama has gotten the stop they need, and Michigan's attempting a very long field goal, which is going to not be good. If you want to see it from this angle, Turner was able to get a good hit on the ball, but he missed it wide right, and now all Alabama needs to win is a field goal, and that's not much. I don't know why they're spiking it on second down, because they still have plenty of time, but they're going to go with another run, and that's not going to get a first. Those are some interesting play calls, and on fourth and one, they did not pick it up, where they just handed 
handed it off to Kobe Prentice, so Michigan is going to hold on to get the win over Alabama, and that was a wild first semifinal matchup. Now the Wolverines have to wait to see if they're going to play Washington or Texas in the championship, and neither of these quarterbacks threw an interception, but J.J. McCarthy outplayed Jalen Milrow. Just like the last one, this is very even on paper, and it's taking place in New Orleans at Caesars Superdome. It's time to see who wins the other semifinal matchup, and here we are watching every kickoff because we're not going to miss out on a return. It looks like Washington and Michael Penix are getting the ball first, and he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So hopefully he puts on a show versus Texas. And on this first play, he's already thrown up a deep bomb, which is going to be caught by Roma Dunze, who throws a guy off of him. This is exactly why we wanted to watch the Washington Huskies, because they're going to be doing stuff like that all game. And that wide receiver screen didn't go anywhere. Now Michael Penix is keeping it on the read option, but it's only going to get a few. So it is third and eight where he's going to throw it over the middle of the field and it's intercepted. He has already turned the ball over. Texas gets the interception and that's more turnovers than what we had in the other semifinal matchup. Now it's time to see if Quinn Ewers can lead his team down the field, but the Longhorns are missing star running back Jonathan Brooks with a torn ACL, so they're going to throw it a lot, and that's another good catch. Unlike the other semifinal, these quarterbacks have no fear in throwing the ball all over the defense, so it seems like this matchup's going to be even more entertaining, and Quinn Ewers had a lot of time back there to find his target for 20, so the Washington defense is already getting shredded, and that's what I was afraid of happening. CJ Baxter is the replacement for Jonathan Brooks, and he got six yards on that carry, but he didn't get the handoff there, and maybe he should have taken it because there was an open lane, and that play action didn't work, but they're going to get the first anyway. And of all the good receivers Texas has, I didn't think Jordan Whittington would have a bulk of the catches. The Longhorns drive continues, though they've already moved it like 70 yards down the field. And Jaden Blue is another halfback that we're going to see getting touches, but CJ got this one, where he made it second and six for Texas, and now he's going to catch this option pitch for the touchdown. He got rocked in the process, but this ball got over the line, and we'll see if the Texas defense can force another turnover. Michael Penix is going to have to put that interception in the back of his head, and it looks like he is as he's already found Jalen Polk for 20. And watching Washington in real life this year has been so much fun, but they're just the same on NCAA football. They throw it over and over, and every so often Dylan Johnson gets a carry where he takes it for a lot, but he didn't look very explosive there, so they're going back to the air, and he catches the check down. This is a big third and one for the Longhorns, because if they could have gotten a stop, they would have forced him to a field goal. But Michael Penix wanted the first down, and now he's back to throwing it where that ball went nowhere. On second down, they're going to use a little bit of play action, but everybody knew they still wanted to pass it, so it didn't fool anybody, and of course they're passing on this third and long, but that is not going to get them to the first down marker. Washington's offense hasn't been able to finish anything with a touchdown yet, and Texas's offense has been perfect, but they've also only had one drive. We will see if the Huskies' defense can create some resistance on this one, and they're going to have to do something soon, because you don't want to find yourself down 14-3 to in the first quarter, and they've stepped up as it's now third and seven. Quinn Ewers goes with a wide receiver screen underneath, and Xavier Worthy gets it. Texas shouldn't have moved the chains there, but they were able to anyway, and of all four teams in the playoffs, so far their offense has looked like the best one. They're going to have to pick up this third and two, though, and CJ Baxter does. So they've gotten themselves another set of downs and this jet sweep gets them seven. That's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. And on this next play, Quinn Ewers just hands it off to CJ Baxter, who's going to go backwards a few. So that was a great play from Braylon Trice, but they still have to be able to get Texas off the field and they can't stop Xavier Worthy. The more I watch this Texas offense, the more I think they're going to win it all because they just seem to make all of the right decisions, but they're being tested with another third and long. And on this one, Quinn Ewers is going to almost throw a pick. Elijah Jackson should have caught that ball, but he wasn't able to, which is most likely going to lead to a Texas field goal. And we'll see if Michael Penix is able to reach the end zone on this third drive. He's already starting it off with a big run that is going to go for 22. And he was so close to breaking it off himself, but he just needed a little bit more speed there. And look at Polk going. He just slipped out of that one. So with just two plays, Washington has picked up 53 yards and Dylan Johnson broke a tackle, but it didn't get him anywhere. So it's been a rough start for him, but he's only touched the ball twice on the ground and that throw was almost intercepted. The Texas defender couldn't get to it. And to be fair, Jalen Polk had it in his hands, so he should have held onto it, but because he didn't, it's now third and nine where they're going to get the first down. Roma Dunsey broke a tackle and reaches the end zone. We all literally just watched his foot hit the pylon on this play, but the refs didn't give it to him, so Washington still needs to punch it in, and why are they passing? They're on the half yard line, but they're still in shotgun, which worked out for them, and all of a sudden, we're all tied up at 10. There's still four minutes left in the second quarter, so there's plenty of time for both teams to score, and Quinn Ewers just threw an interception, so the Texas offense is no longer as prolific as it started, and they might not win this game. Washington could very well score a touchdown on this drive and their defense is starting to come alive. So we'll see what they can do. They're undefeated for a reason and Roma Dunsey is going to catch that one for eight. That puts him in a second and two where again, Michael Penix is throwing it and they have a flat open. So besides his one interception, he has been very solid in this game and Dylan Johnson couldn't get into the end zone there. So now they're passing, but I don't understand why they don't just go with something like the tush push. You could do a quarterback sneak. Now they're not picking up the third and goal. And that was almost intercepted by Texas. Some very weird play calling from the Huskies, but I'm sure that Longhorn fans aren't upset about it because being down by three isn't as bad
that as being down by seven. And something's clicked for Washington's defense, so Quinn Ewers has got to step up here, and he just put that throw perfectly where it needed to be. Xavier Worthy caught it a few inches short of the marker, though, so they have to get this third down. And right now, we could be seeing the final drive of the first half if they manage the clock correctly, but that ball literally just bounced everywhere, and I thought it was going to be intercepted. After not having any turnovers in Michigan versus Alabama, it's been a change of pace to already have two in this one, but it's made it far more entertaining, and they're not getting that third down. Washington's defense has actually stepped up, and I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to do that. Now on this first and 10, they're getting at least five or six. I guess that's going for a first. And that's tight end Jack Westover's second reception of the game. He is 31 yards on the day, but Washington's going to need to pick up even more through the air, and there is another first for them. About a minute left in the first quarter still. Now Michael Penix is throwing this one in Jalen McMillan's direction, so that's his first catch of the day, and they've gotten it to the 30 where they're going to go to the halfback for another 20. If their offense could just finish off some of these drives, they would be winning by so much against the Longhorns right now. And I don't know why they're in a rush to score on Texas. There's still about 45 seconds left, but they've been in hurry up mode. And on this third and goal, they're going to only get a few yards. They're playing it smart though, by taking it to the half with this field goal. And I'm sure that they're happy they have a six point lead after how they started. But before the second half starts, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. With the playoffs coming up soon, this is a great time to get the app. And you can play in over 30 states, so there's a good chance yours is eligible. Anyway, you're probably wondering what Prize Picks is. And on there, you simply pick higher or lower on two to six players' projections. And you can win up to 25 times the money if you're right. But I also like attempting smaller entries like these. And if you want some free cash to start out with on prize picks, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100. Now it's time to see if Washington holds on to their lead. But the Longhorns get the ball to start the second half. And with their first snap, Quinn Ewers is going to be passing where he has already thrown a laser for 17. After how they've looked on some of their recent drives, that is nice to see. And on second and six, he's just handing this one off to CJ Baxter, who gets enough. That moves the change, and now they're hitting him with a halfback screen for almost nothing. And you have to be impressed by the fact that the Washington defensive lineman was able to get out to that football, but there's nobody out there on the flat on this play. And if they can't pick up this third in inches, I'm sure they'll go for it on fourth down, but they do. So Jaden Blue keeps it moving, and right now Texas has 12 first downs, while Washington has 13, so it has been even. But Xavier Worthy just took a shot, making this third and nine, and they're going deep where he catches it. With the touchdown, Texas would take a one-point lead on the Huskies, and it seems like they will, but they're going to need about five more yards, and Quinn Ewers isn't going to get it. That slight hesitation could cost them, but CJ Baxter runs it in, and Texas is right back on top. We will see if Michael Penix can respond back. He's just going to go underneath for a few yards on this play, and on second and four, they had their tight end in motion before hitting them with the play action, and now they're going to find Jalen Polk. He's got five receptions for 66 yards, so he might have the most catches on this team, but Barrel Soul getting that sack there's a big deal, because now it's second and 17, and Washington's going to need a bigger play than that. Texas is about to get them off the field on this third and 12. They sent a lot of people in, though, and they get the interception. So they've gotten the ball in a much better position than they would have if they forced the punt, and Quinn Ewers just went with the deep shot to Jordan Whittington, who's going to take it to the one. The Longhorns have come out playing so much better in the second half, and they're trying to earn their spot in the championship, but there's still about nine minutes total remaining, so the Huskies aren't out of it yet, and we all know that they're going to sling the rock. Penix is 22 for 30 at this point in the game, and he does have those two interceptions, but besides those, he's been really solid, and on third and eight, they're not going to pick it up, so the Texas defense is really starting to stand out. Forcing a three and out there is a massive deal because if Texas has a good drive, they could go up two possessions. And that run went nowhere on first down, but this second down run is going to get them about eight. Third and two now for Quinn Ewers, where he is going to fake them out with a play action and then hit his tight end. So that's the first time that we've seen Jatavion Sanders get involved, and it's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. As of recently, the runs Texas have been doing have not worked out, which makes it third and 17, and they're going to need a massive play, but that's not reaching it. It's not the end of the world for them that they're being forced to punt here, especially if they're able to pin the Huskies back, but they couldn't. And all of the computer's punts always do that. It's one of the things that's broken with the 2013 AI, but I'm sure stuff like that will be fixed in the new college football game this summer, and that is a huge play from Washington, which is going to take them to the 35. If that receiver was anybody other than tight end Jack Westover, it would have been a touchdown. But what was Michael Penix throwing at there? It's like he's trying to give the ball back to the Longhorns after having a good play, and they cannot be held to another field goal on this drive, but it's fourth and one, and here we go. They are not going to kick. They're going for it. They're going to pick it up, keeping their drive alive with five minutes left, and now he's going to go right back over the middle to the backup halfback, and this time on the goal line, Washington's actually in a good formation, which proves how easy it was for them to get in this entire time. However, they also need to get this two-point conversion, and they're going to, so we are all tied up at 24, and Texas has the ball again. With five minutes left, I don't think we could have asked for a better semifinal matchup, and on second and two, Quinn Ewers is going to look over the middle to pick up the first down, where he finds Xavier Worthy for his eighth catch of the game, and that's the most we've seen from one player. There's still time for him to get more as well, and on this one, he's going to go to CJ 
Baxter, but I don't think he got the first down. And that makes it third and inches where they go with the jet sweep and Washington's defense is going to stop John Tay Cook the second. He just took a terrible angle on that run. And Roma Dunze is on this punt return, which goes to the 30. But if Washington wants to take the lead, they're going to need about 35 to 40 more yards. And their first run went backwards. So now they're going with a little bit of play action and that's a sack. Byron Murphy the second was not letting Michael Penix make a play and neither was the Texas defense there as they forced a three and out and they're setting up their offense for success. We'll see how far they get on this return because they might not need that much more to get in field goal range. And Quinn Ewers is going to finally get Adonde Mitchell involved, but that's not going for more than a couple yards. Second and seven now. He's going to keep it on the read option and this is going to go for first down. So Texas is inching closer and closer to field goal range and they are going to get it with Xavier Worthy. I'll be very curious to how they manage the clock from this point forward. They cannot afford a sack because with that, I'm not sure they can make a kick from here. And on third and 11, if they can't pick this up, they're going to give Washington another chance and Quinn Ewers takes another sack. They're attempting it from 54 and it looks like it is down the middle. So evidently their kicker had the range to hit from there. And Michael Penix has 45 seconds left, but they ran the ball. I will never understand that play call because they had to burn one of their final two timeouts. This play's getting in bounds. So time continues to tick off of the clock. And on third and eight, he takes the sack, making this fourth and 15 the game where he is going to get the throw off and it is going to be caught by Roma Dunze. I don't know if it's enough to get Washington into field goal range, but they're going to have to get another big play and it is intercepted. The Texas Longhorns are going to take down the number two seeded Huskies. He just needs to go down. And Washington almost came back right there, but Jalen Catalan made sure that he got the play on the ball and CJ Baxter won player of the game with three tutties. Now our national championship is set and it's time to see who's going to win it all. The championship isn't being played at SoFi Stadium in real life, but it is in this video and it looks like Texas is starting off with the ball first as Michigan's kicking it off to them and this one's not being returned. We saw that this offense could get things going whenever they needed to in the last game. Now they're getting eight on their first play. And Xavier Worthy has been so hard for teams to stop, which makes sense because he's really good. I wasn't sure if they were going to give Quinn Ewers the first down there for that run, but now they're running it again with CJ Baxter. And right now the Longhorns are keeping the chains moving. They've already picked up two first downs, but that was almost a sack. And you have to wonder where that ball would have gone if Quinn Ewers got it out. Michigan's defense has yet to force a turnover in the playoffs, but they could today on this third down. Texas is going to pick it up. And can you imagine how good they'd be doing right now if they had Jonathan Brooks. He's like a 97 overall on NCAA football while the rest of these running backs are 80s. And on third and three, they are going back to passing where they're going to pick up the first. Adane Mitchell held onto the football, but this play's going nowhere. And that makes it second and 13 where they give it to CJ Baxter and he gets six. Texas has already picked up two third down conversions on this drive, but this time it's not happening. And instead of being aggressive, they're just going to settle for a field goal. If Michigan's going to win, Blake Corm's going to have to go off and we'll see if he can carry them. He's taken this first handoff for about seven, but the refs gave him a couple extra, making this a second and one, which they're easily going to get. That's a solid start for Michigan. Now they're passing it, and that was almost intercepted, and that risk was not worth the few yards it got them. J.J. McCarthy is going to have to avoid making reads like that on this third and five where he does the right thing, and that moved the chains for the Wolverines where they're just going to keep on picking up short gains. I mean, that stuff might work for them. I don't know what's going on here. That was a weird play call, but they only need four yards on third down, and Texas's defense shut that down. That's going to force the Wolverines to punt it. They were not close enough to attempt the field goal and it's going out of the back of the end zone. So the Longhorns were able to get the stop that they were looking for. And by the look of it, points might be very hard to come by in this game. It's third and 14 now for Texas, where Quinn Ewers is going to step up in the pocket, but not get it out. So Michigan has forced a three and out and they're going to need a massive punt from Sanborn if they want to flip field positioning, but that's not going to bounce. And this return is going to go to the other side of midfield. Michigan starting this drive where they left off on their last one and they couldn't pick up the first, but this time their offense is able to get past the 40 and Blake Corm didn't get many yards on that run this time they're going to go with the option though and Texas was all over it making this a third and 12 where JJ McCarthy's going for the first but it was almost intercepted to end the first quarter Michigan's trying to tie it up at three to three and they do but this is on pace to be the lowest scoring game that we have spectated yet and Jordan Whittington's picking up right where he left off I can't necessarily say that he outperformed Xavier Worthy in the last matchup but he did have that big breakaway play going for like 50 yards and that changed everything now it's third and short for Texas and Quinn Ewers keeps it, but Michigan isn't fooled, so they got the Longhorns off of the field when they wanted to, and I feel like both teams have had a lot more design quarterback runs than they would in real life, but it is NCAA football. After his big performance in the semifinals, Cornelius Johnson just came away with his first catch, and now the Wolverines offense is starting to move the ball through the air, with J.J. McCarthy having three straight completions, and he's going for his fourth to Cornelius Johnson. Texas picked off Michael Penix three times, so I'm expecting them to get at least one today, but they've given up five straight completions, and this could be a sixth, but they get the sack. This long Longhorn pass rush is no joke and they just send a blitz in but Michigan was prepared. So no matter what happens on this third and 11, they should at least get a field goal out of the drive but 
that's all they're going to get. These low scoring games where points are hard to come by are so competitive and at some point something's got to give but neither offense has had anything too explosive so far. I mean Quinn Ewers has only thrown for 51 yards and there's only a few minutes left in the first half but things might be starting to open up until they go back to running the football. On second and six they're actually going to pass though until he runs up the middle. There was a lot of space that was the right decision but Quinn Ewers fumbles the football away to the Wolverines. They're going to pick it up and they are the first team to force a turnover. I thought it would be the Texas defense but I was wrong about that and I don't know why Michigan keeps designing runs for JJ McCarthy to only get a few but he will pick up the first and he knows how to not fumble the football. The Wolverines are trying to finish this season 15-0 and but they've still got a lot of work cut out for them and JJ McCarthy again keeps it where he's going to break one tackle. I don't think they're close enough to be in field goal range just yet though so they need at least a few here and I don't know if two yards is going to do it. James Turner is going to attempt it from 54 yards out anyway and this one hits off the post and he was so close to drilling this kick he got enough power on it but when it come down it just didn't go in. That sets up Texas nicely to get at least a field goal but all of these running plays and passing situations are enough to drive me crazy and nobody was open there. The Michigan defense is on pace to force another three and out. Texas isn't getting this and they even took a timeout. I guess the Wolverines will have a chance to score before the half and we'll see how aggressive they play this because if they turn the ball over that would also really hurt them and at this point in the game neither team has more than 120 total yards which hurts my soul. It was a very rough offensive first half with this being the final play and JJ McCarthy just threw it up in the double coverage so it's going to be six to three with Texas losing and they also have to kick the ball back to Michigan to start the second half so the Wolverines are in a good position. If they could have just had a couple of better offensive drives they'd be in a much better one but like I said earlier that Texas defensive line is scary as they just got a sack and they're about to force a three and out on Michigan if they don't pick up this third and nine which they're not going to. JJ McCarthy has completed 14 passes for 83 yards so that tells you how little success he's had at finding big plays and on this punt return the game is going to freeze so give me a second because I have to fix this. All right the game is right back where it left off. Texas is going to pick up this first down and they should continue to pass the ball because that's what's been working best for them. For whatever reason though they feel obligated to go back to the run and it is going to pan out for them on this play at least but I want to see Quinn Ewers sling it and he's just handing this one off to Jordan Whittington. They have three really good wide receivers and a good tight end so there's more throwing that's what they actually have to do and that could lead to the first touchdown of the game because they're getting close but I'm sure the Michigan defense is going to try to come up with a good counter to it and what are they doing? Because of whatever that play was it's now third and four and the scoreboard just disappeared but they're going to get in so Jaden Blue took it to the crib and Texas got the first touchdown of the game. I wish it didn't freeze because all of the stats got reset but they're still decently similar to the original one and Roman Wilson's going to take this jet sweep for nine. It wasn't enough to move the chains though so they're going to have to go for another run play that doesn't make it and Blake Corm has to pick that up. JJ McCarthy is going to do it on this next one though and go for an extra 14. So the Wolverines are definitely not out of it and he keeps on running the ball. I haven't watched that much Michigan football this year but I know he doesn't keep it this much and there's another first down with them now going with a halfback draw to Donovan Edwards for more. Right now their rushing attack cannot be stopped and they continue to do it so I can't blame them but you have to wonder if at some point Texas is going to pick up on it and start stopping it like this and they did on that play but now JJ McCarthy is going to keep it again making it third and two where he's just going to run up the middle and get it. I don't know what was said at halftime but the offenses have figured it out and it took them a while but thankfully they did. The game is far more entertaining in my opinion when teams are scoring back and forth and just like Michigan Texas is going to go right back to running the ball with Quinn Ewers keeping this and fighting for a first down himself. Both of these quarterbacks have done a fantastic job on the ground but now we're seeing a check down from Quinn Ewers which is only getting a few and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. The champion will be decided in the next seven minutes and right now the Wolverines have a three-point lead on Texas so the Longhorns have to pick up this third and five and they're going to do so to Jordan Whittington. Now on first and ten handing it off to CJ Baxter for about six and on second and three they do the same thing but for no gain. This is a huge third and two and they went with the wide receiver screen. Adonai Mitchell got caught though and the Texas offensive lineman made a great tackle but he also might have just sold them the game. Now they have no choice but to go for it on fourth down and Quinn Ewers is going to try to pick it up with his legs by himself and he does while getting an extra 10 but that was very close to them turning the ball back over to the Wolverines and now they're inside the two. All they have to do is punch it in here but they're going to lose yardage so it might not be as easy as we thought it would be for them and that's the second time Quinn Ewers just went back by three yards. Now he's trying to thread the needle but it's intercepted by Michigan and Texas isn't getting any points out of that drive. That is a big deal because now the Wolverines have a lead and the ball so theoretically if they do the right thing with it Texas might never see it again. That was the perfect handoff from JJ McCarthy and on third and five they're going to have to pass to pick up this third down where he's going to find Roman Wilson but it's dropped. This was right where it needed to be so there's no excuses and Michigan is punting it back to Texas where they might be able to get a decent return out of this. I'm not sure who's back there. It's Xavier Worthy and he could come up big for this team if they were ever willing to go back to throwing the ball but as of now they just continue to hand it off to CJ 
TJ Baxter instead. And it is third and seven where Quinn Ewers just tried to quarterback run. I couldn't tell you what Texas is doing, but evidently they don't want to win. They are punting it back to Michigan. They never passed there. They didn't want to pick up the first down. And now Michigan can run out the clock with a few first downs themselves with that one actually being caught by Roman Wilson. He's trying to make up for his drop on the last drive and Texas has started to burn their three timeouts. They're going to stop this one. So they'll still have a chance if they can get Michigan off the field on third and four, but they weren't able to and the Wolverines can just run out the rest of the clock. I mean, they're trying to pull a Miami by running it still instead of just taking a knee, but this is going to seal it. And this is the run that made Michigan your 2024 national champions out of the four team playoff. That's it for the video though. So let me know if you want to see me do this with 12 teams and make sure to check out these other ones if you haven't seen them already.